Yes, my wife. I, so this was uh, recently her birthday, and uh, decided she's. I said, "What do you want for your birthday, hon?" She goes, "I want to go to the opera." <laughs> okay. I uh, got her some tickets, to, two tickets to the opera, and uh, it's funny. It's a good story. It's a good story. Um, little sneak peek of maybe a one-man show. This could be a movie. I don't know. But um, I get there to this uh, opera house, and uh, I'm sitting there. I got my suit on. I'm looking good. And uh, this show starts. Opera starts, you know. And I'm, I'm looking around. This guy's up on stage. Some jerk's up there going, la, 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 this and that, blah, 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 right? Looking around, an hour goes by. <laughs> I couldn't take it. I stood up. I go, shut the fuck up! <laughs> All right, it's the early crowd. That's usually a standing O. Um, I'll let you work up to it. There's more to the story. So the security comes in. You can't do that. Fuck off. I sit down, my wife is crying. <laughs> An hour goes by, another hour goes by, folks. Okay? This is a f four or five hour opera. <laughs> this guy's still up there, this jack off. Ma, 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 me, 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 ma, 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 me, 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 me. <laughs> I can't hold it back. I get up. I <laughs> Yeah, thank you, thank you. That's what you gotta do. That's what you gotta do. No more bullshit. No more bullshit. No more bullshit. Thank you. <clears throat> ah, boy. Well, you know, we got kids now and um, I do love the kids. I love them. I was a little disappointed because I was hoping there would be more material, uh, material in there. Uh, but they're doing fine, and there's nothing for me to work with so much. But um, I do kind of miss the old days, you know, before the kids, when it was just me and my wife, and we were just a couple of nine-to-fivers, you know? How many not before the, the comedy career? How many people here are nine to fivers, just pushing it through every day, eight hours a, a day, eight, nine to five, 40 hours a week, just pushing the grind. You guys are making the country work, by the way. You guys are turning that wheel, and we salute you. Yeah, I was doing the nine to five thing for a while, and uh, actually a little, I was sort of doing the nine to five thing. I was also doing a little uh, day trading, you know about day, you know, day trading? Uh, kind of did that for a little while. I used this E-Trade. Um, <laughs> That's yeah, kind of cool. It's an E-Trade. Uh, sort of lets you invest on, at your own pace, I guess. It's um, <laughs> kind of cool. I got sort of into it for a while. They let you kind of uh, kind of customize your um, the way you want to invest, you know, so you can be get a little risky, you know, uh, or sort of play it safe. It's a whole range. You could, you could get analytics and mess around with that. I got to mess around with that for a little bit, but it was... It was it's a good service, you know. It's easy, too. You just go to etrade.com, log in, or set up an account, link it to your fucking bank account. It's, like, too easy. And it's funny. It's like, is there still fucking people on Ameritrade? Just, like, which doesn't have the tools that E-Trade has. It's like, okay. But, um... I was doing the nine to five thing, and my wife was doing the nine to five thing, and it was sort of just those salad days, you know, where you didn't have a lot of responsibilities. And we had this routine where we would sort of, I would, uh, she would cook dinner, and I would come home, and on the way home, I would stop and get a bottle of wine. I would get uh, just nothing fancy, you know, just like whatever they had at 7 Eleven, and just sort of, um, just good, just straight, you know, just 
perfectly fine wine, just not, nothing to write home about. And, you know, we'd sit there at the dinner table, the kitchen table, and uh, we'd talk about our day, and we'd sort of laugh about it, and we'd eat, and we'd drink, and we had, you know, we'd, by the end of the meal, by a couple hours go by, and we'd drunk the whole bottle of wine. <laughs> we'd just like, <laughs> you know, and we'd do that, you know, throughout the week, and... Um, <laughs> Now, of course, on the weekend, things changed a little bit. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you guys are like me, but I have a garage, and in that garage is a big fridge, and in that fridge is some ice-cold Coronas. Yeah! Right? Ooh, ice-cold Coronas. Getting me thirsty or just thinking about it. And I'll tell you, Saturday mornings, I'd get up, and uh, about 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning, I'd crack open my first Corona of the day. <laughs> and I'd go out in the back porch, and I just said, no, nothing on the schedule, nothing to worry about. I'd check E-Trade, um, <laughs> see where my money's at, and uh, just waste the day away. I just had a drink and talk and hang out and just... By, you know you know how it happens when you're kind of going through your Coronas, and you get sort of like, <laughs> suddenly the sun's setting, you're like, what? You know? And I'll kind of stumble into the house and uh, crash down on the couch and, uh, you know, pass out. And, geez, you know, middle of the night I wake up and I got to fucking piss, right? <laughs> Guys. <laughs> and I go in, I go in uh, to the guest bathroom and, and whip it out and, you know. <laughs> stumble back, pass out, wake up at 6 a.m. There's televangelists on the TV. I don't know where I am. I spend the rest of Sunday like this. <laughs> that's, that was sort of the routine. But I do want to, I give my wife a hard time, you know, I give her a hard time, I love her very much, and I'm proud of her, and I want to give her a little shout out tonight, she's been working really hard on something, she started her own business, and we're very proud of her for that, we love uh, entrepreneurs here, and she has started this business, it's so cool, because she's, she's very smart, she's very uh, design savvy, you know, she, she understands the feng shui of the area and everything, and I think there's a lot of, there's some people here with, you know, horse blinders on when it comes to candles. And she started this <laughs> company called Mix My Candles. And there's a website for it, mixmycandles.com. And uh, <laughs> it's so cool. What she does is she kind of kind of analyzes your candle situation. And guys are great for this because guys don't know anything about candles. Am I right, <laughs> ladies? And... Uh, She'll come in and she'll evaluate the situation and she will mix your candles around. <laughs> and it's, it's amazing how it sounds so simple, but it changes everything. Um, but it's, I love sort of demoing it with the guys in the audience. Is there a guy? You come up here. What's your name? Dave, the, the big Dave and Goliath, everybody. <laughs> come up here. Oh, like, come up. Hey, I'm up here. Let's hear it for Dave, big Dave. Big Dave with the tight shirt. <laughs> Comes Big Dave up on stage. He can climb up. He doesn't have to be big entrance. Come here. Come here, guy. You got your karate slippers on? Stand right here. <laughs> got the uh, Nazi haircut. <laughs> what's, your, uh, what's your full name? David Villalpando. Okay. <laughs> David Villalpando needs to brush his teeth, folks. He's, uh... <laughs> so tell me, listen, David. Tell me a little bit about your home, your apartment. Where I assume you live in an apartment. You're not living in a home, this guy. <laughs> Let's be real. Where are you living? What's your situation? One bedroom, apartment. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, and tell me your candle situation. Where, do, where are your candles? I have three candles. Pretty good. For a one bedroom. For a one bedroom. Pretty nice. Okay. <laughs> Bathroom. 
kitchen, living room. Okay, we can work with this. This is this is cool. Um, by the way, do, is this, this? You said this is your girlfriend. What, yeah, what's your name? Daniela. Okay. And do you guys you guys live together? Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> How long has this been going on? We've been together for five years. Five years. That's terrific. Let's hear it for this five-year relationship. Living together, one-bedroom apartment. You guys don't have a lot of personal space, I assume. At the apartment? No. Okay. <laughs> um, five years. Girlfriend. No, uh, no next steps here. <laughs> there will be. Oh, there will be. Well, what? Do you love her? I love her. Do you love him? Well, hold on. What are you doing? I mean, what's, what are you waiting for? It's, it's all about timing, Tim. It's, well, to what better timing than this? These people are your, this is a supportive place? And you feel strong? Wait, what is the, what is the problem? What is this delay? Why don't you just do, be a man here and make a decision? Is this who you want to spend your life with or not? Yes. Well, let's do it. Get up here. Let's fucking do it. Come on, get, and don't get her the back way. Get her up on stage. I don't care how you do it, because he's going to change his mind. Are you, do you have a ring? I mean, I got, to, I got a ring for you. Here. I'm going, I'm, truth be told, I'm going through a divorce. So you can have it. Um, go ahead. I'll tell you. I'll tell, I need to take a two minutes, so you take over. I'll supervise. <laughs> Yeah, I'm definitely not going to be pros on the stage right now. Just like okay. this. And kneel. <laughs> Daniela? I love you very much. This is really weird. Will you marry me? Hold on. What did she say? Yes. There you go! Stand up for him! Stand up for the love! It's 2018. I'm in New York City. Midway through an eight-week off-Broadway season of my show, Randy Writes a Novel. The soon-to-be pirated YouTube sensation. <laughs> in New York should be a dream, right? Pinnacle of my goddamn career. But I feel like I'm doing the wrong show in the wrong theatre and every night I grab my audience by the scruff of the neck and drag them unwillingly through my own existential nightmare. <laughs> and I don't know if you've ever met anyone from New York City, but they don't tend to patiently endure the bullshit of others. <laughs> I once had a homeless man in New York tell me to hurry the fuck up while I was handing him a dollar bill. <laughs> so it's not going great. <laughs> For added context, the show isn't the only horse meat currently feeding my black dog. Before I came out here, I split with my management company. I have no work lined up after this season. And last week, my girlfriend flew out here from Australia to break up with me in person. <laughs> Yeah, I would have been fine with a phone call, but apparently it's much easier to kick a man while he's down if you're in the same fucking room. So, <laughs> she made the trick! <laughs> this morning, I met a friend for brunch at a cafe in Greenwich Village that only serves oatmeal. The cafe is called Oatmeals. <laughs> it's very good. My friend is also an Australian comedian performing here in New York City and she's had her fair share of depressing career moments. So I was hoping for a little bit of sad sack solidarity. Unfortunately for me, Hannah Gadsby is having the breakout season of her career. <laughs> Her show, Nanette, is selling out every night at the Soho Playhouse. Her audience is filled with celebrities and Netflix have just handed her a gift voucher for a lifetime's worth of cunnilingus. <laughs> I, on the other hand, had 32 people in my Sunday matinee today and 21 of them walked out during the show. 21! Not all at once, either. 
just a few at a time, in a steady, humiliating trickle, like people having their number called out in a fucking deli. <laughs> it was the nonchalant disrespect that really broke me. About halfway through the show, an elderly woman in the front row started clipping her fingernails. <laughs> we could all hear it. She did both hands, thumbs inclusive, then slowly got up, put her coat on and left. <laughs> she clipped her fingernails and then left. Do you understand what that means? <laughs> My show was less important to this woman than the speed at which her fingernails were growing. <laughs> 10 fingernail clippings out of 10 is easily the worst review I've ever had. <laughs> After the show, my theatre staff told me that she said she left because she thought there was too much swearing in the show. I mean, to be fair, I did call her a cunt. But... <laughs> After the show, I step out of the theatre, turn right and walk 23 minutes down West 42nd Street to Grand Central Station. I purchase a ticket for the first train going north, which is a Hudson Line train to Poughkeepsie for those playing at home. I board the train, remove my jacket, take my seat, and vow to never, ever, ever do comedy ever again. <laughs> Opening song, that's what this is. You thought it was a comedy, now it's a musical. What the fuck is this? I was over there, now I'm right here. I've changed my clothes to signify that it's a different year. Cause this show happens over multiple timelines. Timelines. Like a Tarantino film without the graphic homicides. And far fewer foot fetish moments. <laughs> except for this one. <laughs> Opening song written by me A singing, dancing piece of shit that you all paid to see You got it wrong, it's cabaret Sucked in bad if you thought this would make a good first date <laughs> Cos this show is my goddamn magnum opus you made the choice to be here, so you better fucking focus. <laughs> and if you'd rather be at home with married at first sight, you get the hell out. There'll be no refunds. Terms and conditions. Come on! When purchasing a ticket, always review the event and seat selection. No exchange or refund for misplaced tickets or show content objections. Subject to no conditions, consumer provisions, price including taxes. No bad attack at the back and out, you're on crack if you drastically underestimate the power of the written code of practice. As a purple Gen X cis man with an income and a platform, statistically I'm more likely to instigate a shitstorm. But I'm also much more likely to escape without reproach. The system is still stacked my way, that's why I think I can get away with an opening song. Opening song, that's what this is. Has a key change that's a little hit or miss. Opening song, right in your face. I couldn't give a flying fuck about my own fan base. I just wanted to sing an opening song. Fuck you. This is one of those reusable shopping bags, and this one just happens to be made out of plastinium, you know? <laughs> just a coincidence. But where I'm from in Boulder, they want you to use these bags. And if you use one of these plastic shopping bags, they charge you a dime per bag. Tax, I know. And it always gets really quiet during this part of the show. Everybody's like, dude, just pay the damn dime, you know? And, and honestly, it would not be the first time I bought a dime bag in Boulder, but it makes me mad. Because I feel like I'm doing my part. Like I say, I'm a vegetarian, I ride the bus, and I don't care if you eat meat, you could tackle a cow right in front of me and start gnawing on it. I'd be like, hey, I think that's your right, go ahead, you know? And if the cow started winning, I would jump down there and start fighting the cow with you. But 
But it makes you mad, like I say, 10 cents a bag, right? But here's what I found, and that is that these much smaller produce bags are free, you know? So I started bagging my groceries in these, and then I'm like, hey, I'm gonna need some help to the bus stop, because I have 83 of these. And you could send a bag boy, and that didn't sound right. So then I was a like, bag person, and that sounded even weirder. So then I was like, if you could just send your lowest paid employee, that would be great. So here's the other thing, though, you know, like I go through the self checkout, and uh, it prompts you, and it says, How many bags would you like to purchase? So one day I was feeling my oats, and I'm like, Hey, I hit 200. And hits, hits in, you know? So the manager comes out and he goes, Sir, you didn't mean to purchase 200 bags, did you? And that's you down to 20. And I said, I sure did, man. <laughs> and I made him count out 200 of these plastic bags. And then I was like, Oprah, you get a bag, you get a bag. So. <laughs> oh, thanks, man. So the manager comes out and he goes, sir, you have to stop, you can't do that. And I said, you can't stop me, I bought these bags. This is America, I'm doing it. And it turns out they could stop me. Uh, there was a lawsuit and I'm no longer allowed to shop for groceries in Boulder, so. Now. You know, a lot of comics sell t-shirts or CDs after the show. I'm selling this book, and I didn't write it, but I'm selling it, so. <laughs> I just have the one, so see me. <laughs> see me in a hurry if you're interested. And I'm also selling this. It's, um. <laughs> thin spaghetti. If you're listening at home, I'm selling some thin spaghetti. It's, uh, I guess I should describe it, it's a one pound bag, box of thin spaghetti. I did one of those things at the grocery store where you buy 10 and you get a really good deal. So I bought 10 of these and then it turns out I'm not a fan of thin spaghetti. So, one dollar OBO. All right. I'm a creepy guy, I'm a real creep. I cover up every part of my laptop except the webcam. <laughs> I'm creepy and sure, why not? I'm also a bit freaky. I get kind of freaky. I, uh, I like to go to the beach. Don't swim, don't swim. Too busy flying my drone. <laughs> Using it to drop Maltesers into people's snorkels. <laughs> I'm disgusting. I, uh, my breath reeks. I floss my teeth with a tapeworm. <laughs> I'm disgusting. I'm a sicko. They want to give me the electric chair. They're worried I'm going to sniff it. <laughs> but let's get to the point. We're here to talk about the Bratz dolls. The Bratz. Who came up with that name? They don't look like brats to me. I find them very stylish. <laughs> I think they're quite sophisticated. They've got all the latest fashion. They've got some amazing accessories. Brats? You call them brats? They're not brats. A brat is a nasty little person. Brats throw tantrums. Brats are very selfish. These chicks care about each other. They're always doing photo shoots together. They look good, they look after each other. Also, brats. Brats. Oh, wait, a Z instead of an S? You people are okay with that? No, that pisses me off. I'm boycotting the Bratz dolls. I'm not buying any more, and that's not an empty threat. I've got quite an impressive collection. I've got a lot of brat dolls. I keep them in the bath. <laughs> I'm not buying any more until there's a complete rebrand. I firmly believe with all of my heart that they should not be called the brat dolls. They should be called the dynasty of the elegant sisters. <laughs> Am I wrong? 
What about these dragonflies? Have you ever seen a dragonfly? You may have encountered one at a picnic. That name is too good. How'd they get dragonfly? Pretty cool name for what's essentially just a long fly. Very lucky to have gotten that. Do they get to choose that? Very lucky, very suspicious. Could easily have been called the sausage fly. Rats, dolls and dragonflies. Everything else in the world I'm totally fine with. Those are the two major problems. Oh, and of course, number plates. You seen these number plates? They're on the front and back of many vehicles. Why are they called number plates? I'm seeing a few letters. I'm seeing a lot of letters. Sometimes it's an even split. Three letters, three numbers. Sometimes there's two numbers, four letters. That's a lot of the plates, sweetheart. Don't get me started on leather boxes. They got numbers on them. I, will I ever get it together? Will I ever be the ultimate gentleman? I used to go and get ice cream. Oh. How are you, Alan? I know this guy, he's not a good guy. Hi. Who sent you? I used to go and get ice cream. I wasn't making classy choices. I didn't have a mature palate. I'd run in there, I'd say, give me that triple chop chip surprise. Give me the hokey pokey goo -ga. Give me the rocky road bubblegum idiot dickhead. Childish flavors. I don't get uh, ice cream anymore. I don't get ice cream anymore. I get gelato. I sidle into the gelatismo. Wearing a silk tuxedo. <laughs> they say, what would you like? I don't ogle the selections. I don't lean against the glass. I lean back as far as I can. And I make my mouth really, really small. And I say, pistachio. <laughs> oh, an excellent choice, sir. Would you like it in a cup or a cone? Neither. <laughs> Give it to me straight. Uh, some of you may find this next story disturbing. It's an expose that will likely lead to the collapse of the judicial system in this country. I was in the city, I walked past the courthouse, I walked past the judge, the robes, everything. A judge. He was on the phone, he says, yep, just about to have lunch. In his other hand, he was, oh my goodness. He had one of these products. It's four crackers, four bits of cheese. You know what I'm talking about? Plastic container, four crackers, four bits of cheese. I'm sorry, but that's what you're having for your lunch? That is not a substantial meal. Four crackers, your honor. Four bits of very processed cheese. Haven't you been elected to this position because of your ability to make good decisions? I wish I had my own gavel. I'm knocking out of his hand. No, no, that's not good, that's bad. That's not lunch, that's a snack. That's the kind of snack they give you on a plane. They got big tubs full of that crap. You're not on a plane. You're in the CBD. You've got options. What's wrong with sushi? Get a poke bowl. Poke bowl, overruled. No, surely not. I'm watching him. I couldn't look away. He peels off the lid. He takes the first cracker. He puts two bits of cheese on it. He doubles up. This guy doubles up. He eats it. He takes the next cracker. Once again, he puts two bits of cheese on it. He doubles up again. It is a sickness. <laughs> he takes the next cracker. By the way, not even the final cracker. This is just cracker three. He looks in the now empty cheese reservoir. He gets a look on his face like, oh, oh no. 
I'm going to have to raw dog it on these last two crackers. <laughs> a judge! It's unacceptable. This guy wields a lot of power. He's a goo head. He's developmentally challenged. He's looking at a cracker like it's the Rosetta Stone. <laughs> You want this guy presiding over a homicide case? I don't think he could be trusted with a la snack. We've seen how he goes with simple four to four distribution. You like his chances? Rationing dip? Hello? I'm pretty sure he was wearing a wig. The whole thing upset me. I was really, really, really emotional. I went to see my therapist. I lay down and I said, I just don't know what is happening to our society. He said, sorry, what was that? I looked up, he was sucking on a zooper duper. <laughs> a therapist. And then my head wasn't feeling right and I went to the doctor and he said, oh, your head's not feeling right. Here, take this, this is a uh, binopacin. It'll make you feel better. I took the binopacin, I didn't feel any better. I wake up one night, my legs are down $10,000 at the craps table. <laughs> We went back to the doctor and told him, he said, oh yeah, that's crazy gambling lane syndrome. He said, here, take this pill because of course, and that should help. And I go, and, and you know, I, I, I woke up one night and my legs were at the nickel slots and they were up a hundred bucks, but I kept hallucinating that I was out on the road opening for fog hat. And he said, oh yeah, that's opening for fog hat syndrome. You're gonna need to take a slow, a slow ride reuptake in, uh, in a COX-3 inhibitor. And I said, whoa, with the COX inhibitor. And he he said, I knew you were going to say that because that's your fear of pills talking. And we got a pill for that. It's called Neuroconundrum. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. It used to be real simple. One pill made you larger and one pill made you small. And if you were small, you got over and you moved on with your life. <laughs> hey, you ever been driving your car and you think to yourself, wow, this could be my job. Thank you, Uber. <laughs> Hey, you ever been washing a dish and you think to yourself, wow, this could be my job. Thank you, Uber. I'll just wash this dish, all the dishes I can get my hands on, man. Just let everybody bring me dishes and I'm going to wash them. You ever cook a meal for your friends and family and then you serve it to them and then you think to yourself, whoa, this could be my job. Thank you, Uber. What are you doing to me, Uber? What the hell's going on here? You ever been sitting in your cubicle for eight hours a day at work because that's what you do and then you think to yourself, wow, this could be my job. I could work at my job for another eight or 16 hours on top of actually working at my job and my work can become my life. My life can become my work. Uber, Uber, Uber. Hey, you ever been the leader of Germany and you accidentally in invade Poland? Deutschland, Uber, all this. Uber, Uber, Uber. Hey, you ever been pushing a rock up a mountain for all of eternity and you stop and you say to yourself, wow, this could be my job. What the hell are you doing to me, Uber? <laughs> Coming soon from Uber. Standardized gray uniforms, so whether you're pushing a rock up a hill, accidentally invading Poland, working at your job by working at your job, washing a dish, cooking a meal, or driving your car, you all look the same, part of the Uber team. Uber, we're German and we're coming to get ya. <laughs> Uber, 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 I made it out of, hey, wow. My heart and soul have been poisoned for so long now. I don't know how it started. I need to step outside my body and dip my rotting spirit into the warm rushing waves of humanity's caress, absorbing the moisture of fearlessness and honesty. So leave me a beep and I'll get right back to you. Oh yeah, that'll scare away creditors, boy. <laughs> Send them on a super freak out. Oh, have you ever been on stage using a microphone talking to people and you think to yourself, whoa, this could be my job. 
<laughs> I've had different ways of looking at my job. You know, I got to tell you something. I saw a clip of myself from 20 years ago, and apparently I thought back then that people just paid to watch me drink and smoke. <laughs> And now since they changed the laws, I gotta use words and other such trickery. <laughs> hey, you know why you can't smoke in a bar anymore? Me! I'm the reason. I still remember when they lowered the blood alcohol content from 0.10 to 0.08, I said, no problem. I'll just put on another 75 pounds. <laughs> It's a math problem. That's all it is, and I'm not saying that makes it any easier for you, because you know, math's hard. It's the universal language. Everything runs on math. That's how we figure everything out. That's why this country's in such shite, because we're terrible at math. I mean, out of 200 nations on this planet, we rank 193rd. I don't even know if those numbers are correct. <laughs> Oh, that's how bad I suck at math. But I found a problem on the internet. And I took it, it's a third grade math problem, okay? Third grade level. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell it for you now and see if anybody can guess it, okay? Okay, good, this is a third grade level, so it shouldn't, it shouldn't be too hard. A man imprisoned by his own self-awareness boards a train in New York bound for Chicago. He is carrying an empty notebook that he must fill with brutally honest, soul-wrenching poetry before he reaches Chicago. He's wearing a cape with a raven on it. The train is traveling at a speed that is unknown. Meanwhile, on a warm day at Venice Beach, a patchouli rigging folk singer is playing his songs for passerby. Oh, at the end of the day, he asks a palm reader for a ride back in Hollywood, not realizing that neither one of them knows where they are. Now, neither the tortured poet or the patchouli rigging folk singer will ever make it to Chicago. So the question that must be answered is who will get there first? <laughs> I'll tell you who'll get there first. Nobody. It doesn't matter. The hell with it. The hell with the whole goddamn math problem. The hell with math itself. The, the, the hell with the train. The hell with the folk singer. The hell with, with the poet. The hell with the cape. The hell with the ra raven. We'll keep the raven. I like ravens. <laughs> the hell with the whole damn thing. It really doesn't matter. You know, six of one, half a dozen of another. Am I right? You can lead a horse to water, but you better be strong and determined if you're gonna drown the damn thing. <laughs> when in Rome, stay in a hotel. <laughs> you build your castles out of sand, you're playing at a beach. Jack, be nimble. Jack, be quick. Then you can kick down my office door and demand a raise. Sticks and stones might break my bones, but so would an 80 pound carrot. Folks! <laughs> Well, let's face it, if it weren't for me, these clothes would be in a pile right there. Okay, this is probably a really bad time to bring this up, but uh, I don't want to be a comic anymore. I want to quit comedy, man. I want to become a storm chaser. Could you just see that, man? Ooh, Bob Rubin, storm chaser. I'll start off easy. Maybe go after a slow-moving cold front. <laughs> Maybe I'll attach some lightning bolts to my Uncle Billy and make him yell up. <laughs> chasing him around the yard. Or maybe I'll just start chasing down sunny days. Maybe I'll just change my name to Sunny Days and start singing country western. Boy, oh boy, my mom would have been proud of me seeing me in that storm chaser's uniform with that junior radar patch. Oh, yeah. My mom, oh man. I still remember the first time she saw me perform. She came up to me afterwards and went, 
<laughs> I don't get it. You're weird, I'll give you that. But I don't get it. I looked at her and I said, I'm weird, Mom. I'm weird. <laughs> Let me ask you something, Mom. Who was the one that put that spinning dinosaur head above my crib when my arms were too short to take it down? <laughs> huh, Mom? Who's the one that took me to see Fantasia? Huh, Mom? Who's the one that made me dress up one night a year like a freak? I didn't even know which night it was and make me go to strange houses and beg for candy. <laughs> Oh, Mom, and here's the real kicker. Who's the one that read me all those Dr. Seuss books and never, ever told me that he'd never write another book again? Horton, here's a who. Horton, here's a who. Horton's through here in a who. Weird, Mom. Let me tell you something. You practically walked me by the hand of that first hit of acid. And then this is something they, they tell you about. It's like, you gotta be afraid of the acid flashback, you know? They're not really copping to the fact whether it's a dangerous drug or not, but they're saying that the dangerous effect is when you get uh, the flashbacks, boy. Ooh, yes, be afraid of the flashbacks. You better fear the... F fear the flashbacks? Are you kidding me? I embrace them. <laughs> I'm telling you something, it weren't for flashbacks. The last 20 minutes would have been dead silent. <laughs> I guarantee it. <laughs> no, but, but you know what they don't tell you about are the lost moments, you know, the lost moments on acid. That's a little bit scary, you know. Like you could be out having a beer with your friend, you know, having a great time and you're going, wow, this is a great beer. Uh, I'm having a great time, what great friends, the music's great. And all of a sudden you're ripped out of there and you're in a bank wearing a suit trying to secure a loan. <laughs> No, that's the fear that I live with. I live with a terrible fear that one day I'll wake up and I'm in a bank wearing a suit trying to secure a loan. It says here, Mr. Rubin, that you're a storm chaser. <laughs> yes, sir, that's right. I'm a storm chaser. Uh-huh. And it says here you were a comedian for 35 years. Oh, yes, sir, I did that for all those years. Uh-huh. It says here, in 1980, you sold seeds door to door. <laughs> That's right, sir, I sold seeds door to door. And I just wanna tell you something, if you'll give me the money, what I'm gonna do is use it to start a Kickstarter campaign, and the money I raise from that, I'm gonna to use to take tap and dance lessons, and then I'm gonna enter some beauty projects, and when I win those, I'm gonna take that one. What the fuck am I doing in a bank? Everybody on the ground, down on the fucking ground, now, now, now. My pipes are shot. 